What's up you guys? Well, I just finished my morning trading and I'm gonna do a little recap for you, go over the trades I took this morning. Uh, today was a decent day, had some good momentum, no home runs, but a couple of base hits, about three decent base hits that got me green on the day. Two small trades, but green on five out of the five stocks I traded, which, you know, can't really complain about that. And now I get to spend the rest of the day being outside, enjoying some uh, some time by the fire, and I'm making some maple syrup, fresh maple syrup. This is gonna be um, fun. I, I've been enjoying doing this. This is kind of my springtime routine that I do with my kids. So, uh, you know, and I think it's important to make time to be away from the computer, because it's so easy to get sucked into the computer, and I, I find it, I'm gonna try not to lose a finger. I find it myself that if I sit and I keep watching stocks, I'll just keep trading. I'll keep trading, I'll keep trading, I'll keep trading. And then next thing I know, you know, what's happened in one or two trades that just went wrong because luck of the draw, you know, things happen. I end up giving back half my day, the whole day. I go red. On Monday, I went from up 25,000 to red 25,000. That's not okay. I can't keep doing that. So today, I got green, hit the daily goal. I'm shutting it down and I'm not looking back. I'm not gonna look at scanners this afternoon because I don't wanna risk going into the red. I can't afford it. So trying to focus on consistency and you know, getting out of the office, it's therapeutic in a way, you know, just to get yourself doing other things. It keeps your mind busy, keeps you occupied. And it's very easy to fall into that desperate mindset as a trader. And when you start getting desperate, that's when you're bordering on not really trading, but at that point, gambling. You know, if you're it's so desperate and you feel you so badly have to win that you're willing to take obscene levels of risk, you're not making good decisions and that's not gonna uh, sustain you as uh, in a career as a trader. So manage your risk, trade smart, and I hope you guys enjoy the recap. Hit the thumbs up and I'll see you on Monday. everyone so I'm gonna do a little recap of today's trades so finishing the morning at $22,962.95 uh, profit on IXHL PIK AKAN ALLGIMPP green on five out of the five stocks I traded this would be typical of a morning where I'm dialed in and the market is hot uh, a morning that I'm not dialed in and the market is cold, I could be red on the three out of three stocks I trade before I hit my max loss and I'm down 20 grand. So, uh, you know, to, to give a little perspective of uh, where I sit, well, a couple things. So, um, reminder in case you uh, didn't already know, St. Patrick's Day sale is going on right now and will end on Monday, the 14 day money back guarantee is valid for anyone who joins using the lucky 40 coupon code and that will also end on monday so the 14 day money back guarantee is just for traders who join using the coupon code lucky 40 but when the sale ends monday so does the 14 day money back guarantee so uh, you still of course still have 14 days if you join today you have two weeks but uh, it's a special that we're doing right now so reminder of that now um i'm going to pull up my trader view metrics this has been a, you know, kind of rough um, month for me. I had five days of profit and then, you know, $36,000, two big red days, back to back last week, so 18,000, 17,000. No trade Thursday, made 16,000 on Friday, which ended up putting me about, uh, well, actually green slightly on the week, right? Well, basically flat, but 25 minus 18 minus 17, but then plus 16. This week I started up 900 and then I lost 25,000 bucks on Tuesday. That was disappointing. I made back 12,000 on Wednesday, another 12,000 yesterday, and today I'm at 22,900. So uh, this is gonna be a green week, but was basically a break even week coming into this morning. So these last two weeks have not been super easy. Both days, it's been on Friday to save the week and get me back to uh, green on the week from break even. 
uh, and or from red, and I managed to do it today. I, I wasn't sure I would. My first trade was on ALLG, which I'll go over in a second. Uh, but yeah, I want to remind everyone, as always, that my uh, results are not typical. Uh, be, most beginner traders do lose money, so make sure you trade cautiously. My profit loss ratio so far this year has not been super impressive. Average losers, uh, 1,900. Average winners, 1,200. Accuracy, about 67%. Four or five minute long average trade times. So trades are pretty quick. Uh, average daily gain, about you know $3,800, which feels quite small, uh, and, and it is, but the fact is if you look at my um, my equity curve, you'll see right here, this is kind of what it's looked like, well, go 60 days. You know, I made 100 grand, and then I gave it all back. So by the end of the month, I, I was only averaging, you know, $1,000 a day in January, because I ended up finishing up 25 grand, because I gave back so much profit. And then I made 85,000 in February, uh, but now here in March, um, you know, I was only, let's see, so for the month of March before today, what was I at? Um, 33,000, you know, before today in gross profit. So today will put me up at 50, which is good, uh, but that's only averaging 2,700 a day. And it's because of how choppy it's been. Now, you know, when we're talking about choppiness, we do have to look at the overall market and the headwinds, which we've certainly had. S&P 500, we're in a correction. It's below the 200 moving average. This is, you know, a, a period of a lot of economic uncertainty. We've got inflation. We've got the Fed increasing interest rates. We have, um, I mean, we have the very real issue with the cost of oil going up. And then we have, uh, with higher interest rates, with the cost of oil going up. I saw uh, an article yesterday about Alibaba planning to terminate like 30,000 employees or something like that. So then do you start to see higher unemployment? Do, you, do we start to go into a recessionary period? So these are questions that people are asking. And, you know, if we do, then, you know, what do you trade and what do you look for? What are the opportunities? So, you know, trading in a, a bearish market is different from trading in a super you know, strong bull market. We had a really strong bull market from March of 2020, you know, all the way basically until like January, uh, January 15th. And I was, you know, my last hundred thousand dollars that I made was those first two weeks of January. And then since then it's been, it's been slower. So how do you trade in a bearish market? You have to be more conservative. You have to trade with smaller position sizes. You have to take smaller gains when you've got them. If you want to, um, if you want to do well, I think it's very important to be able to be okay with sitting tight and not trading, because the opportunities are going to be fewer and further between. There are trending opportunities if you're looking for swing trades. If you start looking for accumulating positions, you can do uh, cash secured puts and you can do covered calls if you end up accumulating a position. But those are more of a swing trading strategy that's a little bit different. So the best thing for me to be doing right now is to keep my position smaller uh, for my active trading account, probably to take some money out of it and put some of that money into uh, the S&P 500 ETF long term. So put it away and don't look at it for a few years. Uh, historically, accumulating long term positions around the 200 moving average has made sense. Even if we go below it, it's still been a good spot to accumulate. So. Uh, so that's probably a good strategy. I'm happy to see PIK moving a bit higher here. I traded it on this last candle that hit a high of 720, uh, but I um, lost like 300 bucks, 400 bucks. So I was sort of like, you know what? You're having a pretty good day. And then when I saw it come up and do this false breakout, I sort of thought, you know what? Let's just leave it alone. But sure enough, it's broken out. So what's happening here? Some shorts are getting squeezed and it is breaking. It's breaking through these two previous double tops. Um, you've got no resistance till 8.30 on the daily and then above 8.30, you've got room to 10.49. So you do have a nice daily chart, uh, no doubt about it. There's a good amount of room, but it's about managing risk. And so, you know, this is a perfect example of a day where in a hotter market, I would probably still be very aggressively trading. I'd be very aggressively buying dips. 
But at the same time, overtrading can really get you into a jam. So let's look at the first trade I took today, ALLG, currently up only 1.8%. So I bought this one at $11.87, way up here at the top of that candle. Uh, I bought 1,500 shares, and then I added another 1,500 shares as it broke through 12 and took profit as it squeezed up to 1250. So this was the move. It went basically from 11 to 1250. And I captured about that much of it. And I made $800. So I captured a small percentage of that move with 3000 shares. Uh, one of the things that I said during the recap uh, yesterday and that I've mentioned other videos is that as a day trader, we're looking for volatility. We need to find volatility. And so we're looking for something that's moving, you know, 40, 50%, like PIK is. PIK is up 50% right now. So if something's going up 50%, even if we can only capture a small fraction of that move, a fraction 50% is certainly more than a fraction of 5%. So each day, whether it's a bear market or a bull market, we're going to be looking for the biggest gainers. You could look at the biggest losers for reversal trades, but if you do that, you're going to be getting into the habit of trading smaller moves. Your risk is still high. Your profit potential is lower. And you're you're going to not do as well as if you focus on leading percentage gainers, in my opinion. So, so ALLG, that was the first trade. Uh, and then we had IXHL. IXHL uh, hit my high day uh, Momo scanner. So initially, some traders mentioned it. Uh, and you could see, let's see. So ALLG hit my scanner as well. I got in that just a little bit before because it was already on my gap scanner. So I was already looking at it. And some people were mentioning, I just bought and I watched it go from 11 to 12 or 11 to 11.50, 11.80. And so I jumped in as it was squeezing. IXHL, it starts squeezing up here, uh, hits the scanner. And initially I said, you know, I'm not sure about this one because, well, I traded it earlier in the week, and I mean, this was kind of, I mean, the chart is kind of wild. You had this big pre-market move, sells off, rallies back up, and we traded it, and this was what I made money on, on, what day was this? Um, this, this was on Tuesday, the day I closed the day down 25 grand. So I made some money on this, and then I got, I was holding in a halt going down, and I capitulated and sold at the bottom. It bounces from 40 all the way up to $84. It's really, really ridiculous. The next day, I got a little bottom bounce here from 20 back up to like 22 pre-market. Yesterday, I didn't trade it at all. And then today, someone mentioned, hey, look at IXHL. It's bouncing again. It's a dead cat bounce. So a dead cat bounce is... It's an expression. It's not a very nice expression towards cats, but it's an expression. Uh, you know, cats land on their feet and maybe spring a little bit. So, you know, you have a big sell off and then a little bounce off the low right here. And that's what you ended up getting um, a little bit of today. And so when someone mentioned it, I pulled it up and I said, all right, I see that. I see it. It's interesting. I don't know. I'm not sure if it's going to if it's going to work. I, I like the idea, but I'm I'm a little I'm a little unsure. So let's see. So it ends up going uh, first from 1240 up to 13. Hits 1320. And it kind of pulls back a little bit. Then it goes up to 1335. As it broke 1350, I said, you know what? I'm going to punch it. I bought 1500 shares at 1350. All right. So I bought 1500 shares at 1350. I added another 1500 shares at, uh, for the break of 14 right here. And then I took a little profit off at like 14.20. And then I added back at 14, let's see, uh, 61 and 14.33 and 14.80. So I added back in these areas here for the micro pullback. And then we got the break over 15. I took some profit around 15.31. Then I added back at 15.44, 15.45 and 15.60, 15.78. We ended up getting a move here up to 16. I took some profit at uh, 15, let's see, 96. I don't know if I filled anything over 16. I, it doesn't look like I did. Um, uh, 1603, I got some fills. Uh, and I got one exit 
Yeah, it was about there. So anyway, so I got some profit on this as it went back up. And so on this one, I did a little bit of a better job capturing, you know, a larger piece of the move. Now, of course, from my initial entry to my exits, as always, buying, buying, taking some profit, buying, buying, taking some profit. If I had just bought and held the whole thing for the whole move, I certainly would have made more. On the other hand, if this had immediately reversed back down to 1250, I would have been red if I had not taken profit off the table. And that is a reminder as we look at the next stock, A-K-A-N. This one, if you didn't take profit, you went red on it. So on this one, uh, I saw some people mention when it was around $8, as it popped up here to $8.78, uh, it had just popped from $8 to $8.78. And some people were saying, hey, I'm, I'm trading A-K-A-N because this was the stock that was going up on the same day or in sympathy to um, IXHL. This day here, it went from $10 all the way up, holy smokes, to $20 a share. This was an impressive move. Look at that. Nice trade, pullback, and another nice trade. So this again is a dead cat bounce. And because it's uh, sympathy to IXHL, this made sense. So on this one, I took a starter at uh, $879, and then I added at $855, $888, 1059, 1050, 10.71, and I was looking for the break of 11, and then I took profit at 10.55 as it came back down. So at, I, I added at 10.71, and the high was 10.94. So that's buy high, sell higher. So I started adding and I kept adding. The fact that it moved that much and the fact that we had this big of a move two days ago made me want to keep adding. Uh, but then it it started to pull back. And so I sold as it started to, you know, the wave started to roll back in. I took my profit at 1055. I tried to do a dip trade at like 984, thinking, okay, it dipped off the VWAP. Let's see if it bounces right back up. I got out at 1015. And then I got back in at 957, and then I sold at 969, and then I was just like, wow, this thing is really selling off pretty hard. It's not holding. And so I, I left it alone. The, the candle was high volume red. And so I was a little disappointed that that didn't hold up better. And then almost immediately I switched over to PIK. And this is something you'll notice in trading is that as momentum shifts from one stock to another, if if PIK hadn't come into play, the odds are attention would have stayed on AKAN and IXHL. But because momentum shifted and picks started to open up, all of a sudden, you know, it was like those stocks were yesterday's business and now it's all, you know, PIK is the one that we focus on. And it could be really disappointing when that happens when you're still holding the one that now people are losing interest in because volume's declining, people aren't buying it, they've moved to the next exciting stock then you know the new shiny object and traders can be very fickle and just like that we're done with one and we're off to the next one and you've got to be kind of ruthless we don't want to get married to these stocks we just we let them go we trade the volatility and then we let them go and and that way you don't get caught holding it too high so pik i started buying right here on this candle and going into the open, I added for the breakthrough six. And, you know, I didn't capture this move as well as I could have in terms of profit, but my best exit was right up in this candle here of 720. So this is where I traded it, right in right in this area. And, you know, I did pretty well on it. I added $7,000 of profit. And that brought me from 15,000 on the day up to 22,000, 23. I got to 23 and then gave back like 400 or whatever, 300 off the top. I think I was at 23, 300. And so now I'm just kind of like, you know what? Be grateful. You've had a good day and you just recovered from being, you know, flat red on the week to green thanks to the last three days. Why don't you put that money in your pocket and let's try to have a better week next week. We still have two weeks left in the month of March. So I'm sitting now at 50,000, I think it was what we were looking at in gross profit. Uh, again, to reiterate, my results are not typical. Most beginner traders lose money, uh, but that's where I was sitting at in gross profit. So net profit after fees and commissions, certainly less than that because I've been trading quite a lot. 
but in any case, um, you know, trying to make my way back to back to the highs. And I finished at eighty-five thousand dollars last month. Here we go. Sorry. So, uh, so this is my year so far. Forty-four thousand in us. Uh, so this is gross profit. It's so forty-four, one hundred four, and thirty-three. So let's switch to net. Um, that's after fees and commissions. Uh, so uh, 25, 86, and 15. So add today's 23, so that, that'll bring me up to 35 or so, uh, which is good. Um, and with two weeks left, you know, I mean, look, if I had three more days like this, that would add 60,000 bucks and I'd be up over 100 grand on the month. On um, You know, so, and today wasn't, it's not like today was a home run day. Today was a day where I had, three decent base hits and two smaller winners. So if I can have that kind of day, you know, two or three more times in the next two weeks, 100K is within reach. You know, it certainly is. But if I have another day like this or like this or like this, that's gonna be a problem. That's gonna be a problem. So I need to manage my risk. I need to take it a little slower and try to, you know, hold it together. This is my equity curve for, uh, like I said, for the year. It's it's a mountain range, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, back up, back down, back up, back down, back up. So I was at 127 on the year before today. So that'll bring 130. So put me at 150. My all-time high of the year is only 157. However, if we contrast that, today's uh, the 18th. Let's look at 2020. Same, same time period, 2020. So in 2020, I was up 87. I gave back half, got back to 70. So I'm ahead of 2020. Let's look at 2019. 2019, much, much cleaner equity curve. And I'm a little behind 2018, but only like one day behind 2018. 2019, sorry. Uh, 2018. Oof. Yikes. So, uh, so I guess that's a little bit better when you, the 30 day doesn't look so great, uh, but I wasn't really down that much. So about the same as 2018, 2017 was when I started my small account challenge with uh, 500 bucks. So it was only at 90, but of course I started with $500 in my account. So it's pretty impressive there. Uh, and then let's not forget about 2021. Minus 180, 160 up 784 back down and back to 1.3 million holy moly so that was an anomaly and that was gamestop that was traded gamestop so you know had one huge red day uh, but a few huge green days and that made all the difference and the market was just super hot okay so that's not going to be every year that's atypical but when we compare to more typical years you can see that um I'm, I'm pretty much on track it's just a little disappointing that it's been um as choppy as it's been i would much prefer that 2019 kind of equity curve where it's just like slow profit each day you know without a significant drawdown but I put my money where my mouth is, I go big, I buy at the highs, I often buy tops and and I size up. And you know, so the thing like on AKAN or some of these others, you know, the first couple trades I'm in with small size and then I add back with bigger size. And so when I add back with bigger size and then it does that false breakout, you know, I get, I, I take a big hit and it hurts. And I've taken a number of them this year. So why do I keep stepping up to the plate? Why do I keep stepping up to get knocked down, to get knifed? And you know, for me, it's it's very hard to um, it's it's very hard to unwire that aggressiveness that I have in me. I trade aggressively. Everything I traded today 
was moving before I got in it, right? When I see something starting to move, I jump on and I jump on quick. So what's the difference between something moving in a hot market and a cold market? As it's moving, it looks the same. As it's moving, it looks exactly the same. The difference will be the resolution, how high it goes. And that's what's been really hard for me to keep in my, you know, the front of my mind as I'm doing sort of a uh, intuitive impulse jump in something that, you know, buying a top like right up here, this could, this could really hurt you. And I'm glad that I hesitated on this trade and didn't take it, even though it went higher because the risk after those two false breakouts was really high. And now it's pulling back. So I don't think, yeah, I, th I don't think my story is, is really um, probably inconsistent with a lot of traders. We're all looking for opportunity. You know, we're bottom feeders in the market in a lot of ways. We're just trying to capitalize on the, the bits of volatility here and there and capture small pieces of it. And when the market is colder, we tend not to do quite as well. We do better in volatile markets. And so trying to find those waves of momentum each day can be challenging in a slow market. And I'm optimistic that I'm gonna see great opportunities every day. And it seems like I'm getting great opportunities like uh, maybe half as often as I'd like. Win versus loss days, $11,000 average win days, $18,000 average loss days. I've made 383,000 this year, but I've lost 250. Accuracy on the loss days is poor. Um, you know, that's a little disappointing. I can go do a compare here, winning trades versus losing trades. And let's go back. Um, so these will be winners and then we'll look at the losers. But, you know, I mean, it's, so average winners are $15,000, average losers are 12. But as we saw, my, my accuracy is only 67%. So I, I just need to tighten up that accuracy a bit and um, that'll, that'll help tighten up the accuracy and try to reduce the size of some of those losers. And that can mean by trading with smaller size. But if you trade with smaller size, the winners are gonna be smaller too. So it means maybe on days like today, once I get some profit, easing off the throttle a little faster uh, and making sure I don't, because if I get myself positioned too heavy with too much size, it can be really hard to uh, unwind that position. And then I can get emotional and I can get stuck and married to it. And then I end up really digging a hole. So I've just got to be a little bit more mindful that the market that we're in right now is a colder market. It'll heat back up, and when it does, I'll be here ready to trade it. But in the meantime, I don't need to take tremendous amounts of risk because this isn't the right time for it. So that's it for me. That's it for the week. I'll be back at it on Monday, as always, uh, hoping uh, for some good opportunities next week, and I'll see you guys then. All right, have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. And remember uh, to use the Lucky 40 coupon code if you haven't already. And as always, trading is risky. My results are not typical. Most beginner traders lose money, so take it slow. And that right there was an entire video with no ads. I don't monetize my YouTube channel with video ads, which means you guys get to enjoy the content. But do me a favor, please hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up and let YouTube know that this channel is the channel to watch if you want to learn about day trading.